In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take our second look at a brand new tool in PowerDirector 18 or 365 called the Shape Designer. In a previous tutorial, we looked a bit at some of the basic elements of it, but in this one, we're going to focus on what I would consider advanced features. One is the unique role that titles play in the Shape Designer, also the element of keyframing. So let's begin and see what we can find out. First of all, I'm going to go to the actual area where I find it. I go to the PIP Objects room or press the F5 key on the left side. And then I look at the top and I'm going to see the triangle, circle, and rectangle. If I hover over it, it says create new shape. It will do just that. And we have one of our 21 default shapes. I'm going to start out with a square. And, and let's lengthen it to a rectangle and change the proportion a little bit. Now let's assume we want to add some words to this. So if I go, go all the way down, drag down the larger slider, at the very bottom I have a title. Now this is an interesting feature the way it's been used in this particular tool. If I click inside the T on the lower left side, I can enter text. So this is a sample of using text in the shape designer. Now notice what the default is. If you look at the lower left corner, the default is shrink text on overflow. That will keep it within the title. This is not like what you have when you're using titles and objects independent of one another where you can move them anywhere you want to. The title here is tied to the shape. Watch what happens when I uncheck the box. All of a sudden I have an issue where the text goes outside of the shape. And if I were to actually highlight it and increase the size even more, we find that once again, I have the issue here with the text. That's why it's default to shrink on overflow. Because if I were to take my hand and move this anywhere I wanted to, the text and the box will always move together. If I change the size of the box, I can put the text inside it by redesigning it. But there's a limit to what you can do as long as this box is unchecked. When I check it, it will automatically make any text fit within the parameters of the shape. So that's a unique way in which the text is anchored when it comes to using the shape designer. Let me show you another feature that you have. I'm going to start over with a completely different shape. So we'll cancel and say no, we don't want to save the changes. We'll get back into that same tool. This time I'm going to pick a circle. And what I'd like to do is make the circle look a little bit different so we can do some fun things with it. We're going to fill the shape and I'm going to use a two color gradient. We'll use black and white, which will give me a gray. Then we'll take the outline from the blue And then I'm going to give that a two color shape too. We'll use the same pattern, a white in this case. And let's use a, a black on the other side. Give it a little bit of a blur. And now what I'd like to do is add some text. This will be golf disk promotion. Now you notice when we do this that we do have some issues with our text. We can do one of two things. It will fit in the size of the the element that we have here, but we either need to shrink it manually by picking a smaller font or we need to enlarge our circle. So whichever what you want to do will work. But I'm going to show you the other option we have here that's a bit more advanced. It's keyframing. If 
you look at the, the top on the left, we have a tab called keyframing. And if I click it, it will open up a group of keyframe controls in the timeline below my preview screen. This is very common in other elements of CyberLink PowerDirector. And I can make that disappear for the moment by clicking on the down arrow in the middle on the right. That will hide it. And the up arrow will restore it. Now why it doesn't come simply default this way without a tab, like other elements does, I don't know. But that's how you have to trigger it. You have to start it by clicking on the keyframe tab here. And so let's use position and rotation. And I'm going to move all oh, about halfway in and click another position and rotation keyframe by clicking on the diamonds. I'm going to go back to the first two. And let's take this and move this to the left. And we'll do a rotation value. I'm going to move to my rotation option. I'll do a minus 360. I prefer to type it in usually. And now I have those values set when it's off the screen. So when I play this, let's see what happens. Okay, my disk rolls in. So that's one way in which you can add motion or sizing. You can make it zoom in. You can change the, the ratio of it anytime you want. But this is how you can add more features than just a static image by doing some keyframing, by changing the scale, position, opacity, or rotation. So that gives you an example. When you're done with the element that you've created, the shape, you can click on Save As, and this screen will pop up, and then you can put a name to it. Let's just call this uh, My Circle, and press Enter. And then we'll click on OK. And now it automatically defaults to Custom here, where you have some custom things you've, you've created. I have another few that I've done before. But this gives you an example of ways in which you can use these elements in as many projects as possible. Now you cannot create multiple shapes on the same screen, but you can put multiple particles into the same element later on, so you can duplicate it or add to it any way you like. But if you want to create one particle at a time, this shows you a little bit about what you can do with regard to both text and with regard to at least basic ideas on keyframing.